I'm changing it to HP server so everything matches from prior installations. You can leave it what you want. I'm surprised it says HP storage, but HP server. Click on the arrow button. Type in the password. Make sure you remember your password. I'm going to at this point click on use recommended settings. Now it's going to go through and do the updates for the home server. Now this is going to take a long time so have some patience with it. Uh, I run 25 megabits a second or more so it usually won't take me more than an hour or so, but if you're on a, for example, two or three megabit per second from Maidenhead, for example, uh, it could take you hours and hours to download the updates and do what you need to do. So uh, have patience with it. Do not turn it off. Do not do anything with it. Just let it go through, and eventually it will go through and process all of the updates. It's now rebooting the home server. Okay, 721, and it says it's now ready to use. So let's click on start. Okay, it's finishing up. And let's see how we do. Okay, so you cannot see it because it's off screen, but the websites and the remote access and everything else is disabled. Uh, in addition, you can see that I have a blue screen, so we're going to figure out what to do with that. Okay, so we have the software updates that we're going to do for the HP MediaSmart server. Now remember, the Windows Home Server updates, like Power Packs, etc., are independent of the MediaSmart Server updates from HP. So we're going to click on Start. Again, it's 726. We're 49 minutes into our server recovery and upgrade to 3.0. First time, so let's see how it goes. Next, install. OK, 
I <clears throat> finished up with the 3.0 patch 2. Okay, now it looks like I'm ready to go, so I will reestablish my connection with the Windows Home Server. Okay, it looks like the console is finally responding after a couple of minutes now. Again, the first few times that you restart and you do what you need to do, the console is going to be slow. Just have patience with it. Don't click on cancel or close it out or try and reset it. Just let it do what it needs to do. And here we go. The interface is considerably different than the 2.5 interface. You can see I've got a little bit of blue up here, so some of the add-ins are still loading and getting ready to respond. When I go to settings, you can see here that I have very little in the way of add-ins and information. When I go to update, you can see that I have version 3.2.1.34990 from 2.3.2010, yada yada. So I've got everything else that's listed. Uh, I will go in and I will look at my add-ins now. The add-ins again were left there from the server recovery, so they should all be there ready to install. Installed is blank. Available, I have all of these here. I'm not going to install them yet. I need to give the server a little bit of time to get used to being here. Now that I've disabled Twonky, my system actually works much faster than it did before. Again, it makes a huge difference when you disable Twonky to see your network utilization, your memory utilization, and your CPU. Again, your CPU will pop out at 100% if you're having issues with Twonky. Now what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through and do the final update. So I'm going to go to Settings. Okay, update now. And this will start the PowerPack 3 update. Again, the 3.0 update from HP doing a recovery installs PowerPack 2, and then you will go through and do the update, and it will install PowerPack 3. Verifies the download, and we'll go through and do the installation process. Again, if you have Twonky enabled and you're getting slow server performance, disable Twonky and then do all of your updates. Doing this live only takes about a minute or so. Uh, depending on your download speed and the processor speed. Okay, it's now completed. It's going to restart. It took about a minute to do. We'll restart and we'll be right back. 